update regarding Theophilus London. That's concerning, but also helpful because it helps clear some stuff up. And, you know, it's not a rumor that I was kind of reporting on beforehand, which was kind of coming from some, you know, second and third sources or friends online. But according to the Los Angeles Times, he has officially been registered as missing and he was last seen on Skid Row. And most of you know what Skid Row is. It's an, it's an area or street on LA, mostly a street where essentially all the homeless, um, the drug addled, mental health addled, and just people who have basically, you know, just lost everything in life and kind of are looking for some sort of direction or comfort within a little community. They kind of hang out in this really sketchy looking part of LA called Skid Row, which I've been to a couple of times. I went to LA and it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a mind F. I, I have to, I have to tell you that you think you've seen Skid Row by looking at videos and pictures online. When you go there in real life and see these people, you know, human beings just like you and I clearly looking like they've, you know, maybe given up. They're just in another planet mentally. Um, the psyche is all disheveled and broken. Obviously, they look and smell like absolute putrid. Like the, the putrid smell of Skid Row is something that also doesn't leave you. It really does bum you out. Not going to lie. Especially being in LA, the home of the entertainment um, industry, the home of Hollywood. There's, you know, millionaires and billionaires living all over the place, you know, Hollywood Hills behind gated communities. And there's this level of poverty. It's just like, wow, man. Life truly isn't fair. Like, truly isn't fair. And from what I've seen so far, what I read online, no one's really doing anything to really address or to fix that issue. It could be mostly a political thing. Maybe the Democrats are kind of resistant to kind of, you know, changing anything to do with Skid Row because maybe they think it's inhumane to take people who are homeless off of the streets and put them in the homes and try and get them rehabilitated and off drugs and blah, blah, blah. Who knows what it's the deal is, but from what I remember going there, it was something that legitimately was a vibe killer to the point where I didn't want to do anything the rest of the day. It just doesn't leave you in that respect. You kind of just be like, rah, Ted, man. And for the most part, what you hear a lot when you go there, especially if you go with somebody that's from the area, a lot of the people that I've heard that are end up in the skid row are people who initially moved to LA with a dream. They moved to LA with a couple of dollars in their pocket, a suitcase full of dreams, and they went out there to try and make it happen. It didn't happen, and they suddenly wake up and you're in skid row. And it happens very quickly from what I've been listening to and watching clips of people who are homeless and describing their prior lives. Some of them may be like Uber drivers that always have flipping amazing businesses outside of Uber. Some of them may be lying, but I think for the most part, there are a lot of people on there outside of the people who are so clearly suffering from mental health issues, who, who maybe are or addiction and whatnot, who are clearly great people who just ended up in, you know, had a shitty, you know, roll of the dice got dealt with a shitty deck of cards and just, you know, one mistake after mist one mistake after one and the other and then suddenly you end up homeless and you're gone. So I'm hoping these reports aren't true. I really am hoping they aren't true because if someone like Fiat London who I thought at the one point was at the apex, the Mount Kilimanjaro of flipping clout and influence, you know, he was surrounded by the thing about Kiva Sunday you have to also remember, he was maybe one of the first, maybe outside of Rocky, who kind of had that mainstream not mainstream I say mainstream but he had that kind of snotty elitist fashion cosign whilst also having a cosign of the quote unquote streetwear sneakerheads whilst also having a cosign of the hip hop type people. You don't really have that many who, who can kind of traverse that again, apart from the Rocky. Even Rocky still, I don't feel like he's all the way accepted within the fashion with a capital F. Maybe because he doesn't like to hang around with people too much. I only see him do stuff with Luebe. He doesn't really, you know uh frolic around the fashion weeks as much as maybe other people did but maybe or, or maybe outside of someone like a virgil who maybe on the design front r.i.p but fiofa thunder was one of the first people that i saw really smashing it on that way and also somebody that i felt like went out of their way to represent new york but also wasn't afraid of branching out and doing bigger and better things abroad in la and international right he just was all that kind of rolled into one and there was a time where, you know pictures of you know, activations and, you know, uh, after hours and parties, whatnot, he's always been there somewhere in the background with his big hat on or some level of a hat on, right? I still remember that lover's snapback from back in the day, that 40 ounce van did. I think if you know, you know, and whatnot. So still a legend in that respect. It was a point where some really corny 
you know loser type guys in London some guys that I know actually I think I saw one of them at Berghain once who kind of copied I think some of you may know this I think if you live in a metropolitan city and if your first London was popping when you were maybe let's say I don't know between ages of like 18 to 25 and you would have known that he was really popping and doing his thing, especially when you've considered the whole like skinny jeans, Jordans, leather jackets, snapbacks, starter caps, and those big brimmed hats, whatever he was wearing back then. You would have known that there was many other black skinny dudes, tall black skinny dudes back in the day, who were basically cosplaying as your first London. And I guess if you are from a small city, a small town, and maybe you're not really that plugged in or you just get into the scene, you may think they're actually setting the trends and then really you get in the scene and you realise, oh no, they're just copying this guy. And there was this one guy we had in London. Um, I don't even know his fucking name. It just looks like a prick. But no, I don't really like his vibe. <laughs> but regardless, I remember he always used to have it. I remember just looking and thinking in my head, like you had an absolute wild. Idea. Imagine, imagine a co-op to somebody's complete style and personality and making it yours. And also walking around like you're doing something with those big hats and vests and what the way and skinny jeans and I think he just didn't wear the Jordans. I think he just wore like cowboy boots or something, right? Like Saint Laurent boots or some copy of them, right? Or whatnot. The guy did a lot for the scene. Honestly, Fear Floss did a lot for the scene. So it is pretty sad to see the lack of people, big name people in the industry not really posting it. And not really making a fuss about the fact that he's been missing for so long since what this I think July or June or whatnot I've reported before, and obviously the only kind of logical conclusion would be that he must have burned so many bridges during his time on his downward maybe somewhat spiral or maybe from the fact that he wasn't that relevant or maybe in a you know current public conversation that to the point where people aren't really concerned for his health and safety, which is wild because. <laughs> Maybe it's a while, because if you think about it, if you're on the scene, no one really cares about you as a person. They care about what you can do for them. They're not really trying to pretend like they're your friends. They're not really trying to pretend that they care about your mental, physical well-being. They just care about you because you work in this cool store. You know somebody that works at this cool agency. Um, you're pally pally with people that work at this brand. You get free stuff from there. You get free entry here. That's what they care about for the most part. They don't really care about you. So maybe it's not that surprising. But I still think if you're somebody that are pretending to be his friend, there's still some clout to be had, I would imagine. This is really dark. There's still some clout to be had in the fact that he's missing and you're posting about him. Because you can post text messages, you can post pictures of yourself together. Like people are doing all that with Virgil, right? RIP. When he passed away, people were flipping, screenshotting their text messages, posting pictures of them together to prove that they actually knew him. All this sort of like corny, cringy, horrible, you know, clout chasey, um, making it all about myself shit that everybody hates. We all know that. We know how horrible it is. And people are doing it on the regular. So I'm surprised those very same people aren't doing the same thing with someone like Theophilus London to be missing for so long when you can really use that kind of information to maybe help to people to kind of spec together or put an idea in their heads of what the guy was like or maybe also just kind of you know put yourself in a conversation and make yourself front and center of it be like hey i knew this guy i text him about this i text him about that i've seen a couple of screenshots like that dms but these come from i think like people who generally have a concern for him but everybody else who was trying to uh, vampire suck his clout has essentially wiped their hands of him completely because they're not posting anything about him so he must have done again I'm just speculating here I don't know nothing about it I just know him as a fan looking from the outside in I may have met him briefly from afar once or twice that's it really and again can't really say he's a friend or someone that I know that deeply in any way shape or form but I'm just surprised they haven't made much of a fuss about it and again it maybe just illustrates that he must have done some really heinous things behind the scene I've read some stuff about him and issues with DRUGS, which again, none of my business and don't really think that's a big deal because I think a lot of people are struggling with those sort of things in the scene. They just don't talk about it or they keep it under wraps. And just because he can't, you know, maybe keep it under wraps as a fate of his life doesn't mean he's a bad person. But I'm sure there's other things that have gone on that we don't know about that maybe have affected people's idea of him and maybe what don't want to speak about it anymore, which is again really upsetting because you'd imagine if he did do some messed up stuff, the fact that he's in this has happened and he's been missing since June and July. You'd think people want to put that to one side, isn't it? And be like, you know what? Let's, let's, you know, let bygones be bygones. This dude has been missing for a whole six months. It's going to go into seven and let's just kind of get him found, whatnot. But people aren't doing that. So clearly it's in a dark, dark place. But anyway, let's read the report. 
says that missing persons report taken on Tuesday indicated that Fiofus London 35 was last in contact with somebody via text message on October 15th. The rapper left his home at the one, whatever that thing, Ventura Boulevard that day and was last seen on Skid Row. So he could have been at Skid Row living there and doing his thing, or it could have been you go to Skid Row to go and cop because I know a lot of people don't like to cop the conventional way that most people do, Telegram, Darknet and whatnot. Some people like to go do it in person. And we don't really have those things in the UK. We don't really have areas. No, in London, really. We don't really have it. There may be some blocks that exist, I know, but I can't think of many areas in my area where you can go and cop. You usually have to call somebody and they have to come to you. But obviously Skid Row, you know, home of all the J-U-N-K-I-S's, um, it makes sense. A description of clothing London was wearing the last day he was seen wasn't immediately available. The record label secretly issued a statement when on behalf of the London's family. It said, Theo, your dad loves you, son. We miss you and all your friends and relatives are searching for you. Wherever you are, send us some signal. No matter what, we'll come and get you, son. London is six feet two inches tall, weighs one hundred seventy five pounds, has dark brown eyes. Any more information caught that there, born in Trinidad, raised in Brooklyn, London means David. Blah, blah, blah. But yeah. Crazy, isn't it? So there's official missing persons um, report out there for him. Everyone on the scene doesn't seem to give a crap. Uh, maybe because they don't like him as a person, maybe because they've extracted all the clout that they can out of him. But what it does go to prove is that these people in the scene have no souls. Because if it was me, unless he did something to me physically, like unless he did something to harm my family and friends, there's nothing that I can't forgive to, you know, aid in the search of somebody. Especially on the internet. Because again, some people could say, oh yeah, they may be doing it offline, they're not doing it on the internet, but these people only exist on social media. If they're not doing stuff on social media, it doesn't exist. So if they're not clout chasing off of it. So the fact that they're not trying to clout chase off of it shows that they just generally don't give a crap. And that means that they have no souls, which is really scary. But I think if it was me, I could let bygones be bygones and say, you know what, you scum me over, you did this, you did that. And again, unless it's something that they did physically to harm my close family or friends, everything can be forgiven to a point where I'm going to help look for you or put the bat signal out to my 100,000 followers out there on my verified account that, you know, it should be on their mind to be keeping an eye out for a six foot two black guy I used to hang out with back in the day during Kanye West listening sessions, right? I'd want to put that bat signal out there because you must have shared some good times back in the day, but the fact that these guys don't want to do it speaks a lot for how um, dark the scene can be which is really sad, but you know, and it kind of is what it is, you know, in that respect, but hopefully it does get found very soon. Hopefully it's nothing gruesome, nothing sad. That's what we can hope really in this regard. We can't really hope for anything more than that. So we just have to kind of let this lie and let it kind of develop and see what happens. But so far, no kind of updates. I've been checking Twitter and stuff for updates of people posting maybe locations or whereabouts or sightings. I've seen absolutely nothing. It's been radio silence for a while. So it doesn't look good. Not going to lie. If somebody that's kind of been a fan of true crime and whatnot, you'd know that someone going missing for this long doesn't bode well. But we can only hope and pray that, you know, a miracle can happen and you can kind of pop out and say, hey, guys, I've been at this silent retreat this whole time. I've been getting on my shit. I've been kind of looking at new inspiration, listening to new music. I've been tapping in with this person, whatever. You hope that's the case. You really do hope that's the case because, you know, anything less than that, considering the magnitude and the, the role he played in culture and stuff would be pretty sad, especially it kind of ending in this sort of way. So I hope that's not the case. So, you know, wherever he is, hopefully he gets found very soon and we have some good news to report on that side going forward.